Hi guys, it is a fine day here in the end times in paradise in St. Croix Virgin Islands. We have made it to Tuesday, April 12th, 2016. It's good to be back at you. Been away for a few days shopping for a new camera, which I'm testing out right now. So I thought that I would just share, I don't know, what I consider one of these humorous stories that coming through my life, my crazy life every now and then, you can decide whether this has anything to do with the end of the world or not. Anyway, what I've been doing for the past few days while waiting uh, for my new camera to be shipped here is I've actually found myself, believe it or not, your old doomsday tourist has been helping a, uh, a real estate investor uh, buy a... Uh, back in back in Texas, I used to. But I, I know it's hard to you guys to believe uh, by looking at me. For those of you who don't know, that I was for years and still am, in some level, a real estate investor. So this buddy of mine uh, has been. He's buying a a uh, a foreclosure. From the U.S. government. That's all that's important. So anyway, it, it stems from that. So in in the process of uh, of going through this headache, I've just been reminded of some advice from my mama, the late great Elaine Mitchell. I need to tell more stories about my mama. Hey, one of one of the true great. Uh, humans in the history of the planet. Elaine Mitchell, we lost Elaine Mitchell in 1997, but her memory still lives on. And my mother was, uh, was a very pragmatic woman. Uh, Michelle, is, is that a delicate way of putting it? You know, good, good head on her shoulders. So she had no problem passing her wisdom on to me and three of the pieces of advice my mom always gave to me is, number one, of course, there is no such thing as a free lunch. That uh, no such thing does not, the, the concept of a free lunch does not exist. Uh, wisdom number two, all politicians are crooks. Every goddamn one of them. Now, of course, she would have been voting for Bernie Sanders, uh, of course, but probably while even admitting he was a crook on some level. But most importantly, in the, and what this rant is about is my mama's advice concerning working with the federal government. Now, she was particularly talking about Social Security whenever you're dealing with those idiots at Social Security. But she said it works with any uh, government office. So, And I just want to pass this advice to you because it, it's worked well for me. And that is this. Let's see how much trouble this can get me into. If you ever have to deal with the federal bureaucracy, what you do is... On your on your first phone call, what you say is when they answer the phone, is you say, "I want to speak to the oldest white woman that works there." Go straight to the source. The oldest white woman. If you want to cut through the bullshit you find the oldest white woman. And, and it took me a while to remember this. So I got on, my, my buddy was asking me some questions that I should have known the answer to. So I started out uh, on the website. that I, and, and I love this. Of course, I could not find the answer. I mean, it, it was a little bit of a technical question, but it wasn't that deep down. You know what I'm saying? It, uh, at this point, of course, nowhere on the website. So the first thing I loved is since you couldn't call anybody, they gave you an email uh, help desk link where you email your concern and they would email you the answer uh, hopefully the next day, but probably the next year. So I, I spent quite a bunch of time uh, 
preparing my question and asking my question. So I went to check my answer the next day, and, uh, and of course it was bounce back as failure to deliver uh, because uh, no, there was no such thing as a help desk at this particular federal agency. So that started me on the road to, uh, to just picking up the goddamn phone and, and just calling this federal agency trying to get a question answer, which shouldn't have been that difficult to get answered. And amazingly, how many, how many phone calls did it, did it take to get me to it? I think it was, anyway, I remember the, 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 the first... Uh, the first person and the first attempt I made, it was like a middle-aged white woman who answered. And at this point, I hadn't even remembered m my mama's advice. So I posed the question to this middle-aged white woman, and she referred me. She didn't know the answer, and I said, well, who would know the answer? And she said, if anybody in the United States government knows the answer, it would be Brittany so-and-so. And, and that's when I started hearing my mother's voice, Brittany. Yeah, guys, I assure you there is nobody named Brittany that is the go-to source for the ultimate answer in any federal agency in, in this country. So, of course, I get to Brittany. It's very helpful. She sounded like she was, she was probably some little 19-year-old uh, college intern. Definitely, obviously, a white girl. Uh, so I had young white female. And so Brittany didn't have the answer. So I said, Brittany, if you had this question... Who would you ask? So she put me on the trail to, we're going to call him, I don't know what his name was. Let's call him Bob Watson, some, some man. Uh, so she gives me this. So, I'm, so I get back on the phone, and I call uh, Mr. Watson. And I'm thinking, shit, well, it's a guy. And so... Who answers is not Mr. Watson, did not pick up, but it was obviously an old white woman. And uh, I asked for Mr. Watson, she goes, he's in conference, is there anything I can help you with? And at that point, I, I, I said, what the hell? I, 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 said, I said, I hope what I'm getting ready to say to you you are going to find humorous. Now, now, this was in Texas, remember. I was talking to a Texan, which might have had something to do with uh, this. I, 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 I said, I'm just going to run this by you. So she goes, she goes, shoot. And I said, are you the oldest white woman working in that office? And w without missing a beat, she goes, that would be me. And I said, so I'm going to take a wild guess that you probably know more about this subject than anybody in the office. And she assured me uh, that she was knowledgeable on the subject. And so finally, I asked my question and had my answer uh, within a matter of of one minute. If, 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 if what I had done at the very beginning before ever getting on the goddamn internet trying to find a thing is called this federal agency and asked to speak to the oldest white woman in the office, I uh, would have had my answer. Once again, my mama was right. And, uh, and, I, and, and I'm just passing on this advice to you, you know? It, you know, my mama didn't have a, a, a oldest white woman. She did not have an ageist, racist, sexist bone in her body, but 
She was just pragmatic. She knew where to go for the answer. So, you know, it depends on, uh, and I'm sure my mama would have had different advice. I mean, this is, this is what I carry away from it. If I need information about getting an answer from a, a federal government bureaucracy, I know to ask for the oldest white woman there. This isn't an insult. This is not an ageist, racist, or sexist comment. It, it's a, if you want your damn question answered. If you want your question answered uh, about uh, a policy uh, of, uh, uh, of a federal government office. Yes, you don't talk to Brittany. You know, I think this woman's name was Doris. You, you talk to Doris. You don't talk to Brittany. You don't talk to Shawanda. You, you, you don't talk to Hank. You know what I'm saying? You talk to Doris. And, and so, you know, I'm sure if my mama was looking for a soul food restaurant, if she pulled into a new town where she didn't know the restaurants, and there were three soul food restaurants. There was Beulah's Soul Food Restaurant. There was Brittany's Soul Food. And there was Hank's Soul Food. My mama, I'm just guessing, maybe, maybe I'm just projecting, would probably choose Beulah's Soul Food over Brittany's or Hank's. Are you following me? If you're looking for soul food, you look for the oldest black woman running the soul food restaurant. If you're looking for, uh, uh, what are those little things they sell at Christmas? Tamales. If you're looking for tamales, you're going down the street, guys. We have... Brittany's tamales, we have Hank's tamales, or we have Carmelita's tamales. Where are you going to buy your tamales? From Carmelita, from Hank, or from Brittany? You are going to look for the oldest Mexican woman making tamales. Okay, this is no more of an insult against Brittany or Hank than it is going into the Social Security office and asking for the oldest white woman. You know? Uh, you know, a couple more examples. Okay, let's say my mama was having car trouble. She's on a road trip, and she, uh, and, and she pulls into the edge of town and there's some squeak in her wheel. Wheat, 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 you know, in, 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 her, in her wheel. And she needs somebody to look at it. Okay, she has three choices. We have Beulah's garage. We have Brittany's garage. Or we have Hank's garage if you need if you have a squeaky wheel you need to get greased and your choice is Beulah Brittany or Hank you're going to choose Hank if you have a brain you're going to look for the oldest white man and uh, and, and let's be honest if my mama you know, I, you know, my mama, I, I'm, I'm going to give away some secrets here. I mean, the woman's dead. It doesn't matter. At this point, she was kind of strung out on pain pills from a, uh, from a wreck that she had. So for the last 30 years of her life, she uh, was on these heavy-duty uh, pain narcotics, and which she needed every day of her life. And... I, I, I guarantee you this one, guys. If, if my mama uh, was driving across the country 
and, and lost her bottle of pain pills. And she needed, without any bullshit, she needed access to pain pills. And she's pulling into a new town. Where do you think she's going to go? She ain't going to go to the federal government. She ain't going to go to the mechanic. She's not going to go to the soul food. So she's going to go to the hood. And she is going to look for a young black male to sell her these pain pills. You know, my mama was a smart woman. She had five years of college or six years of college. Uh, you know, I was not raised by a fool. If my mama needed needed some some uh, some heavy duty narcotics and needed them quick, she knew where to go, and she knew who to ask for. Which I guess now LeBron probably or or Malik. Uh, would be who my mama would go for. This is no insult. My mama is not going to go to some old white woman looking for illegal drugs. No, she's going to go to where she's going to find the illegal drugs. You know? So I'm just trying to instill some wisdom in my fellow tribes members. And, uh... You know, this political correctness, I was listening to George Carlin ranting about this. It's a bunch of goddamn shit. It gets in the way of life. You know, we need information from Social Security. We need tamales. We need soul food. We need a mechanic. We need illegal drugs every now and then. And don't let... The, the political, the PC cops keep you from getting what you need. And you better believe as things unravel here in the end times, this is going to be information uh, that's important to you. Uh, the first thing that's going to fly out the goddamn window when uh, this shit starts unraveling big time is political correctness. It's going to be covering your own, your own ass. Hell yeah, you're covering your own ass. And uh, I'm just trying to give you tips. And get rid of that PC bullshit. Now. And uh, with that, I'm going to head out of here and uh, go look for a, a rum and pineapple uh, to, live, to drink on the beach for sunset. My choices are, are uh, Rhythms at Rainbow Beach, Coconuts, or Turtles. Uh, it's going to be a tough choice where to have a, uh, a rum and pineapple in the end times. But the sun is starting to set, and it's a beautiful afternoon, so me and the little dog are out of here. Bye, guys. Little dog, where are you going to go when you need crabbies? That is the big question. Where to go for crabbies?